So um, thank you for changing the slide. Our next two presenters are Matt Barnes, who is Director of OCLC Sustainable Collection Services, and Amy Wood, who is the Head of Technical Services at the Centre for Research Libraries. And Matt and Amy are going to be giving us an update on their joint Mellon-supported grant to improve the shared print infrastructure in paper and in WorldCat. Thank you, Matt and Amy. Very good. Thank you, Matthew. Just an audio check. Can you hear me? Yeah, just fine. Thank you, Matt. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, it is hard to believe it's been two years, uh, but uh, two years ago this month, uh, the Mellon Foundation awarded uh, OCLC and CRL over a million dollars uh, to enhance share print data infrastructure. Um, I'm pleased to report uh, that all components of this project have been completed on time uh, and they are currently available for use by the community. Next slide, please. I'm going to go ahead and report on OCLC's uh, deliverables under this project and then Amy in just a bit uh, will report on CRL's deliverables for this project. Um, so the, one of the main deliverables is that we enabled the registration in WorldCat for serials. Uh, and this is in addition to multi-part monographs uh, and single-part monographs. Um, we greatly improved the flexibility with which these retention commitments are added uh, through the service into WorldCat. And we've also added a completely new workflow that allows a shared print uh, program manager or a third-party agent to register commitments on behalf of the libraries uh, in a shared print group. Um, most recently for the registration service, um, we've added the ability to submit retention commitments, not just in a CSV file, uh, but also via MARC records. Uh, we consider that an advanced option, but it was something that was asked for uh, by the shared print um, committee that we worked with throughout the project. Discovery was also greatly enhanced. Uh, we started at a point where we only had title by title discovery and connection and record manager. Um, we expanded that to include bulk group discovery of commitments in connection and record manager, as well as first search. Uh, we enabled bulk download of commitment data and the query collections tool that is in record manager. And then finally, we added an entirely new API that allows for systematic and real-time discovery of SharePoint retention commitments uh, that are in WorldCat. And I'll touch on that just a bit more in a minute. Next slide, please. I like to think that we kept one of the best aspects of the legacy service that only worked for single part monographs. Um, and that was the ability to bulk register tens of thousands of commitments in WorldCat in only a few steps. At a high level, those steps include creating a collection profile that contains the information that you want to have in your commitments uh, and uploading either a CSV or via MARC records uh, the items that you wish to be committed. Uh, and then the service takes the data from the profile and from your submission and automatically populates all of the appropriate LHRs in WorldCat with the appropriate retention information. Next slide, please. One of the big differences uh, from this enhanced service that handles all formats and, and the legacy service, the pilot service that handled only one format, is how we look at that collection profile that holds your data. It used to be that that was a static format uh, and it couldn't and it was very inflexible. With the new service, we look at the collection profile really as a set of default values. And with an enhanced and expanded CSV sheet, uh, you can go ahead and override those values. And so what does that mean practically speaking? Um, it means that a library only needs to create one profile and can use a single CSV submission to register multiple formats for multiple programs with, for instance, multiple expiration dates. Um, and that is the flexibility that I was referring to earlier. So again, only one profile is necessary per library. Um, and that is also true if you choose to use that new centralized workflow where an agent or a shared print program manager registers on your behalf that um, agent or, or manager is going to use the library's already established profile to go through that workflow. And if you're thinking at this point that uh, creating profiles for everybody would still be logistically difficult, perhaps for a large program, um, you always have the option to fill out a Word document with the information you want in those profiles. 
send it over to us at OCLC and we'll build the profiles for everybody in your program and make them available for use um, whenever you're ready to start submitting commitments. Next slide, please. We don't have time to touch on all of the discovery enhancements, uh, but one I did want to touch on is the new API. Uh, we often get a lot of questions on this as it is entirely new and was built uh, for this project. Uh, the, we called it the Shared Print API throughout the project. Um, it now has a new name. It is the Metadata API version 2. Of course, either name uh, we'll, we'll recognize. Um, one caveat with the API is it does require some technical expertise. Um, you need to have somebody who knows how to both call and store the results that come back from the API. If you don't have folks who have that expertise at the moment, you always have the option to use query collections to bulk download data. The advantage here is this is a systematic real-time lookup in WorldCat. Uh, this API will deliver basic bid data. Um, it delivers high-level holdings data, so an aggregate number of holdings per title. But where it really shines is it uh, provides detailed LHR information, including the 583, um, where the retention statement resides. And this includes program names, expiration dates, condition uh, status, if it's in included, uh, and so forth. Uh, the API will return uh, non marked JSON, and it is read only. So it's for reporting. You wouldn't actually submit retention commitments um, through this API. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, both the registration service and the API are available at no additional charge to catalog and subscribers. Um, all you need to, to work with the service is a world share login with access to LHR data sync. If you catalog with us, um, you most likely know what that is. If you don't, or you have any other questions about access, getting set up, or shared print in general, uh, you can simply email sharedprint at OCLC.org, and we'll do whatever it takes to answer your questions and get you up and started. Next slide, please. So finally, I, I did want to take a step back. Um, many of you would, will, of course, understand the benefits of taking the effort to register titles in WorldCat. Um, I, oftentimes, uh, when I'm talking to groups outside of the regular shared print circles or internationally, it's not well understood. And so um, I wanted to run through these. Um, I think there's three big benefits that, that, that I often talk about, uh, the most immediate of which is uh, letting everybody know which titles are retained, uh, by whom, and for how long, uh, enables informed deselection and retention decisions uh, by everybody uh, in the community. Uh, we'll be integrating uh, registration data into GreenGlass uh, in the next year. Um, and for those of you who do not use GreenGlass, uh, of course, you always have the option to use the API to pull that information and use it within the context and systems that you're using in your program. Uh, a second big benefit of taking the effort to register uh, commitments um, is that um, we believe once we hit a critical mass, we're going to be able to build a global retention safety net and manage it using WorldCat. And that's because WorldCat provides the context to not just show what has been retained, but also, and I'd say just as importantly, what has not been retained. And it's our hope that over time, that items that haven't been retained that are a particular scholarly or cultural value will be systematically targeted and put under retention agreements by the community. Uh, and then finally, with a lot of talk of collective collections, it's of particular interest in the, uh, due to the expected budget impact of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, we believe that registering titles will be a great way for groups of libraries that are working together to build collections uh, to demonstrate commitments to each other uh, that they've decided to retain uh, various titles for the collective uh, and for how long they wish to retain them. Next slide. So I'd like to thank all of you who've been with us for this uh, um, two-year journey, uh, particularly uh, the advisory group uh, that we work with, and we very much look forward to working with the community uh, to bring your registration commitments into WorldCat. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Matt. Oh, sorry, should I, should I jump in now, or were you going to were we going to have Let's questions? Go yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Matt. Uh, well, CRL is very pleased to have had the opportunity to help make WorldCat a more serviceable tool for collection stewardship. We undertook this project because 
WorldCat is a deep well of information, and we need to improve our ability to draw from it. And I think this project has achieved that. Next slide. This project is one of many investments that CRL has made in its 70 years to ensure the preservation of scholarly resources from acquiring and storing through building networks and um, improving data-driven decision-making and now moving into data sharing and collaboration. Next slide. I see three essential building blocks for stewardship of our collective collection, curation, management, collaboration, and innovation. Next slide. All depend on data sharing and improving our ability to share data, to work together, to curate and manage our collection is key to the successful growth of our effort. Next slide. Paper and WorldCat will regularly share data to help keep them in sync. CRL will be both pushing to WorldCat and pulling from WorldCat to push into paper so that libraries only need to contribute once in the way that best suits their workflow. And this is something we had, as a community, talked about right when paper was um, built eight years ago. So this, is, this has really been a long um, desired outcome, and we're very pleased. Next slide. Part of the project was to enhance the functionality of paper, and we have added features to improve both the user experience and to make data sharing easier. Next slide. A vital element of this project has been the involvement of the shared print program managers and coordinators, and we will continue to build on those relationships that were enriched during this project, particularly the advisory board. Um, as Susan um, said in her presentation, advocacy is really important in this, in our collective work, um, and we will, we hope to continue with that, those relationships. So this project page or other informational pages will stay active um, for you to find information. Next slide. So for our next steps, um, adding shared print commitments from paper to WorldCat, library by library, will be a priority. We will work with you to ensure that the data and the workflow quality are maintained to the highest standard. Next slide. And there's my contact information and um, our URL for paper uh, and the project page. Um, please uh, contact us if you have questions. Thanks. Thank you, Amy and Matt. We, we've had one question come in so far, and um, I think this one's for Matt, and it is, will shared print retentions be visible in other interfaces other than First Search and WorldCat Discovery? So there'll be, uh, they'll be visible in uh, Connection and Record Manager, uh, and so uh, they're often used for cataloging purposes, and so they're, they're available there. Uh, and uh, Query Collections is the other place. They're visible in the sense that you can bulk download that data and via the API. Another question that, that, that just come in, will use of these tools be limited to CRL and OCLC members? What about shared print program managers and participating institutions, even those not at OCLC or CRL members? Um, well, the, the paper database is open um, to everyone. So you do not have to be a CRL member or an OCLC member to participate in paper. Um, we will not be able to, um, you know, to share your data with um, WorldCat without your permission and without um, and I believe without the um, the membership in OCLC, but your your data will be available in paper, and um, it will be mingling with all of that that other data, and that and that is open. Yeah, for the the registration service uh, does require either a cataloging subscription or a holding registration subscription. Um, from a, a practical standpoint, uh, if somebody does not use OCLC for cataloging and does not have holdings set in WorldCat, um, there, there won't be a local holding record uh, available for them, and we won't know what, what uh, titles they have. And so there's nowhere to put a uh, share print retention statement if, if they don't use us for cataloging. 
Um, and so um, th those are requirements. Um, however, for uh, the, um, uh, the API, we do plan to provide access to the SharePoint API um, to programs where they're actively registering and working with us. Uh, and so uh, a program would not have to have a cataloging subscription if your members, the vast majority of your members do in their registering commitments. Um, we want to provide the access so that you can manage your program uh, in, in, on an ongoing basis. Thank you, Matt and Amy. Um, 